Thank you so much, Bob. So these are uh, poems that um, I've written over the last six months. Uh, the first one is called O oh, America. I am sitting between a man eating a stew that smells like my mechanic's armpits and a woman who laughs like a baby farting. Oh America, oh America, nothing so much as a love of sky and starlight on wheat and hot sauce and gunshots. We are all thinking the same thing. We are imagining the president's thoughts. I hope there is cake and I get a tremendous piece. I hope I sent the bombs to the right country. I wander lonely as a clown. <laughs> National security. Monday, alphabet soup. Tuesday, alphabet soup. Wednesday, punctuation soup. The sun cinches the edge of winter trees. Why this talk of seeing into your own nature, Hoang Po says to me, and only to me. The humming is outside and inside myself. I am buzzing streetlights, striped bulbs spinning rapidly underground. I keep talking and talking so there is something while the leader is forbidding one more thing, his pen dipped in baby blood. Placeholder. Philadelphia smelled like Vermont today after light rain. The fly buzzed four or five clusters of crocus, the sky draped with gray. There are no stones in the Jewish cemetery under the new president. Our hearts are broken in half, evenly. Lord, teach us how to care. The branches are blurred like webs that ask me to come in. I am only a poet. Am I holy enough? You get the idea? Republic of Ridiculous. It is trash and recycling day. Daffodils leak from the small garden. A man walks by with a sign saying something about the end being at hand. But he's been saying that for years. The trees are classical in the slightly furred green light. Wind in the open spaces is sick and ridiculous. The president sits in a bulletproof car and says his principles are bulletproof. He waves. He does that chummy thing of miming his hand as a gun and firing it. Sanctuary. No one, it appears to them, knows the poem they carry and carry. No one cares it seems, or cares. They would walk beneath the waves if they could, and at times they thought they should. The scent of the fruit is delicious, but it is not enough. Cool wind, which is rare today, is the hand of a good hand. It is night. It is always in the night. They look at pictures of boats. They are impressive and shiny. You can hear a sailor singing, almost. Why is he happy? Seabirds go over in eccentric flight, as though they were startled, not by unknown noise in a forest, but by silence. Gonteric addresses Washington, D.C. in the form of a poem. The Zen master has a difficult time explaining things to me. He gives the reasons. Apparently, I am pig-headed, 
and things are pig-headed. He uses the example of the peach, its scent, its mysterious color. Throughout the talk, he is slicing the peach and eating it until it is gone. When I arrive home, hey, your cat peed on me. Well, you're wearing camouflage pants and standing near a bush. What did you think was going on? <laughs> War on the natural world. Miss America calls to tell me to look closely at the trees, the cocoons like balls of cotton sunk in the leaves, the people of the town wearing nets over their faces. Think of them at night, ghosts with human bodies. Miss America tells me the first poet has been arrested under the new leader for speeding. The new leader conducts bomb tests in his bathtub. Miss America tells me these things, her voice on the phone breaking up like a flock of birds and reform. Anthem. The light of the moon is a ghost climbing out of a grave. The tulips are too soon. I can't, how can I tell you I can't stand for this country? Here is the stone. Here is the knife. Here is the stronghold of silence. A cat cleans himself in the front of a church door. The used car lot is filled with last year's cars. The field is flooded with moonlight beyond it. Soothe me. Soothe me, baby. Why Putin packed the election? All winter long, I received emails offering bulbs and seeds from a place named Eden. And then it happened, full spring. Crocus broke through dead leaves. Small trees were recorded in bloom. Children celebrated in the streets as after a war. Of course it ended, and impoverished souls, we went back to living our lives of winter. The birds sang less, less with alarm, ramped up on ennui. Temporarily, it returned. Fairy red buds and Japanese maples, perfect, brilliant crocus and cryptic patterns. We opened the windows for the cats. It is though the natural world were saying, no matter what, we can enter your house and do what we want. Holy cow. I stick my hand up the president's back and work his mouth. Paul Ryan is a little bitch. It looks like he says. How are you today, Donald? Donald is good. How are you? Donald has a story. When Maria Shriver announced her engagement to Arnold Schwarzenegger, Rose Kennedy went out in the backyard and practiced turning over in her grave. <laughs> When I heard Nancy Reagan was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, I thought, good, just as long as they don't give it to that conniving bitch, Mother Teresa. Statistics show men think about sex every 10 minutes, except when they're having sex, then they think about sports. <laughs> Donald, you're ahead. Quit while you're ahead. It might be time to return to the mountains, little dummy. <laughs> Sanctuary. I love this custard stand in the mountains, wind laced with perfume of pine, a large bear carved with a chainsaw, the tick of miniature golf holes, and the arcing dots connecting over the driving range, the creek returning the images of birds to the pond. The stand offers waffles and strawberries and rum raisin milkshakes. <coughs> Sorry. When it is my turn at the window, I ask, 
May I have happiness. May I be free of suffering. And a slight departure from that theme. Uh, this is a this is a poem on uh, on writing poetry. I think poem. I track spring in this way. Last week there were like three tulips in my garden. Today there are four. In between, I apparently accidentally called my wife. Scarlett Johansson over dinner. I view the political landscape in this way. It is an elevator I am on, and every floor another clown gets on. Allegedly, police captain Frank Rizzo arrested burlesque queen Blaze Starr for indecency. The next morning at a hearing before a judge, Rizzo held up Blaze Starr's G-string with his nightstick. What's the matter, big boy? You weren't afraid to touch it last night, Blaze Star responded. I imagine that's what the muse whispers to me every morning after a night of writing. So, and I do, um, I do have a, a new book, and um, for this occasion, it is 50% um, off tonight. And I'm going to give you some reasons, five or six reasons why you want to buy it. I'm going to read um, some of the poems from it. Madeline, if you don't love me, the terrorists win. Ways of mourning. My father takes me out of school early. I'm nine. Mother is dead. He lets me drive. Innocence. The ice cream truck jingle drives my sister crazy. I wonder if they have vanilla. In winter, an odd light it is. They kiss long in the driveway of a church. They taste like lifesavers to each other. Evening landscape. There's something scary about the children's games, the neon hopscotch at dusk, the way everything rhymes or seems to. Is this about you? It is about tenderness, so yes, perhaps. Crow of Scarecrow. A man sits on the head. I haven't been reading that long. Yeah. Let me try that again. Crow, scarecrow. A crow sits on the head of a scarecrow. I see myself in that. Which part of fuck off don't I understand? <laughs> Philadelphia. Night coming down, the way a waitress calls you hot. So, I want to read um, a, a couple poems by other poets here, and, um, and these um, as well are dedicated to um, a couple of great people who passed away recently. Uh, the first poem is by H.L. Hicks, it's called Beyond the System for Passing. To say how much I've missed you, I offer this. At most, missed, at least the sordid letters, lists, numbers. I insist, tell stories. I kissed you last in the casket in which you passed off. 
to some place, but last listen for your voice last night, those long years after. We'll listen next, when the next oppressed by blue gray, as I am now, as I thus lost, I'm always by your absence. And this one um, by James Reese called the blue, uh, the blue snow. And I, I do. There's something elegiac about this poem, but I, I also think that um, poems in memory should have some celebration. So, the blue snow. Right now, somewhere, someone is thinking of you, lifting her arms into the summer evening or folding a letter in a small town. Someone is, th is thinking your name and quietly saying, you came into my life on the 23rd, after dinner, when light fell through the window, so starkly you said it reminded you of a Japanese painting called The Blue Snow, and I laughed, thinking, who is this man that talks like a poet? Now, while it is still light, someone is stepping out of her dress and thinking, I will turn off every light in this house and lie down naked in front of my mirror till dawn, then go to the window with the early morning sun on my breast, waiting for you who will never come, you who have forgot what it is to be loved. So I have uh, two more poems to read. I, I um, thank you for your kind attention and uh, I, I thank Bob Zell for this uh, wonderful series and inviting me. And um, I, it's, I don't really do it um, that much, uh, but it's an enormous pleasure to read with Charles. Um, as many of you know, Charles is the Boswell to my Johnson. He is, um, he is the Lewis to my Clark. He is the Lewis to my um, Dean Martin. <laughs> he is the trunk to my Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> he is the captain to my Tindale. Fro <laughs> <laughs> and Yoko do the job. The Yoko, the Yoko, I went up to my John Lennon. Thank you, Charles. So the first of these last two is called Two American Scenes, Diner. At 20 past the hour, there is a scent of bacon and wind. Drying flowers on the cigarette machine crackle in unseen flames. The spirit steps out of the quiet for air and returns to the waterfall of silverware and cups and talk. We don't have honey wheat, we have wheat, rye, and white, says the waitress. I was calling you honey, honey. <laughs> American sketch. It is a lonely part of town. We live at the end of a nice street. The cross street divides the poor neighborhood. The bookstore is on that side. They keep the building nicely painted. We have a yard that meets up to the public park. We have grave markers that honor our pets and parents. People take them and we replace them. I had a dream in which Obama died. We placed a marker to honor him. People took that one too and we replaced it. Sanctuary. My name is Leonard Gonteric. I survived the attack of the Grand 16 Theater where train wreck was playing. I gave it three out of four stars. I had cheese on my popcorn. It looked in the dark like a bucket of tiny trumps. 
I survived the attack of the Pulse nightclub. I love dancing. Gang of four and talking heads. When I dance, I leave my body like a ghost exiting a cemetery at night. Sometimes it is good not to be ourselves for a while. I survived the attack on the honor school at West Nickel Mines, Pennsylvania. Often I can tell if someone is a good person. I can see on their head a halo. It is in the shape of the hats Amish women wear at the farmer's market. I see it on the heads of women and men alike. It is accompanied, the vision, by the singing of children, the beautiful singing of children. I say survive, but none of us survive the strange miracles of this country, where the ground leaks dry blood at dusk, where people look at us strangely when we kneel down on it to pray. People look at us strangely when we lie down to kiss the earth that we love. When we lie down and disappear into the ground, we can no longer see them look at us. The bare trees fill with birds. They want to be flowers when there are none for us. <laughs>